Don't be alarmed, I'm not going daft and becoming a bird watcher again. I packed up that nonsense years ago. These are perhaps the key instrument for this morning's visit to Sherwood Forest Country Park because I'm after scanning the treetops or scanning the birches in particular. This is the first survey for Cryptocephalus coralline, the hazelpot beetle. Now, as you might have gathered by the puddles on the path here, we've had a bit of rain overnight, and a fair bit of rain by the looks of it. It means, of course, that the ground layer is wet still, but it also means that the conditions are right for hazelwort beetle to emerge from the grass and the leaf litter. On emergence, they tend to climb up a high point and sit and rest, often for a couple of hours and then wait for conditions to become dry enough and warm enough to, for them to take flight. Apart from looking at the treetops, using the old trusty binoculars, we'll also be looking across the grass. Quite a profitable way to find the hazelwort beetle. So many of our records here before have been from beetles just sat freshly emerged on grass and low vegetation. It may seem to be a rather arduous and fruitless task looking for a beetle with binoculars on vegetation that's 20-30 feet off the ground, but it isn't. There's very little that you can mistake an adult hazelpot beetle for, even with binoculars. Confirmation is a lot easier if you then use a birdwatching scope to confirm the ID with a higher magnification. But there's really nothing else that has the colouring of the hazelwort beetle. Ladybirds can cause a bit of a problem at first, but once you get used to ladybirds and their coloration, it's a very different red. A new problem that's emerged from the days when we used to record hazelwort beetle here a lot is this beetle that I'll put a photo in of now. And it's the older leaf beetle from Sherwood is now full of them. Numbers are still low but they're widespread and they're even in the grass layer here. Now they're also on the birches. They do present a heart-stopping moment when you get one of those in the frame or in the binoculars. Hazelwort beetles can be identified by the position on the leaf because they'll always sit usually centrally facing towards the leaf stalk and then sat over the midrib in the centre of the leaf. But ideally, confirmation is really needed by a scope. But if you've got lots of experience, which I have, I can identify them with these. And here is that new problem stroke hindrance to finding the hazelpot beetle. This is the older leaf beetle. If this had been here 10 years ago, I would now be doing cartwheels. Even with my weight, I'd be doing cartwheels. Well, at least attempting them anyway, because this would have been new to Nottinghamshire then. Once an amazingly rare beetle and considered extinct for a number of years, but now immensely common in huge numbers. 
thankfully the numbers here while this beetle is recorded on birch throughout most of the NNR from what I've seen it's still only in small numbers and that's a similar thing on the pit tops if older is available older gets stripped by thousands and thousands of these beetles they occur in lesser numbers on other trees but they do eat a range of other trees potentially they may become a problem but we'll have to wait and see at the moment the numbers here are low but it is widespread now and found throughout the reserve now while it recently emerged hazelpot beetles can appear on the top of any vegetation probably the commonest has been one particular species of grass and it's this grass here this rough bladed and large bladed coxfoot grass numerous occasions we found the beetle freshly emerged on clumps of coxfoot grass situated like this pretty isolated clumps it's only odd clumps of coxfoot grass that are here why that is don't know maybe that the larva can feed protected at the base of coxfoot because coxfoot grass produces large thick clumps may also be the ideal overwintering site coxfoot grass or clumps of coxfoot grass are used as overwintering sites by literally thousands of invertebrates and there is a subject for a video this coming winter now a few seconds ago it was one of those heart stopping moments one of those i've got one moments i've gone on about the older leaf beetle being one of those species that can cause confusion here's another one this one causes even more confusion because this is a telebus nitens it's called the oak leaf roller i know those of you with a botanical interest are now saying what's it doing on hawthorn it can occasionally turn up on birch and has done I remember a few years ago just a couple of yards from where i stood now i saw this sat on a birch leaf at the top of a tree and i was convinced that it was a female hazelpot beetle confirmation that it wasn't was eventually through the use of a scope that confirmed that it was this species this telebus nitens that caused the ultimate confusion if you will i'll see if i can get some better shots this is a species that i'll be showing in a few weeks time when it's when they start to breed and you'll see just how it gets its name the oak roller weevil now that i've managed to access it without oak well weevils the swines for falling off even if you so much as fart when you approach it it's sort of took the legs in dropped to the floor how many times has a rare weevil done that to me but if you're looking for the hazelbot beetle you're pretty much looking for this sort of coloration they can be slightly redder than this but they can be exactly this color the difference obviously in what makes this a weevil is this has a rostrum rostrum being the beak like structure on the head this one's been so obliging but this as i say is the ultimate confusion species and when you get a, a glimpse of one of these on a leaf you think you've got hazelbot beetle but at the moment we haven't but we've got a telebus nightens instead
Well, there's certainly older leaf beetle in that birch. This is one of the better areas for Cryptocephalus coralli here. You can see where you've got masses of really healthy foliage. It's also quite sheltered in this little bit of a pocket. There's been a number of coralli found by scanning the tops, but not necessarily the tops of the trees, these lower branches, but always where you've got thick, healthy foliage. That's the place to look for this beetle. In this area of the Sherwood Forest Country Park, I'm very close, well, right at the side of the Gleedthorpe Open, in fact, there's this beautiful apple tree. It's a stonker. Lots of beautiful pink blossom, as you can see. The blossom is just starting to fall now, so in another couple of days, it'll be as bare as anything. But it's been a beautiful tree and certainly adds a lovely splash of colour. And it's well visited by bees as well, I've noticed. It'll be a shame if this goes. Now, I've just found this sat at the top of the grass. And you might think, well, it's just cardinal beetle. It is. But of the two cardinal beetles we get in Nottinghamshire, at Sherwood Forest, this is by far the biggest rarity. This is Pyrocroa serraticornis. This is the red-headed cardinal beetle. And where this is fairly reddish, the more common of the two species that we get at Sherwood Forest, Pyrocroa coccinea, is really vibrant red. This is more of a brownie red. The thing is, this is only my second ever record of this species anywhere within the Sherwood Forest NNR. This really, despite it being common at any other sort of woodland site in Nottinghamshire, is an extreme rarity here. And it took me a minute or two after seeing it stood at the top of grass a few minutes to realise what it was. I was expecting the black-headed cardinal beetle, Pyrocroa coccinea. But this is the other one. Commoner, yet in this context, and habitat much rarer. One of the problems with using binoculars is that anyone that walks up this path tends to ask you what you're looking at. When you tell them that you're looking for a beetle, it's surprising how quickly they lose interest. Hmm, oh, thought you were looking at something interesting. Huh? What people just don't realise. They don't realise that what they're looking for is far rarer, immensely rarer, than what they're going to go and look at. Each to their own, I suppose. But there's a couple of small silver birches here. They've really grown up, actually, in the last couple of years. These are two of the smallest trees here that do get hazel pot beetle. And you can stand underneath any silver birch, especially younger silver birch, and you can look up and you can see the silhouette of any hazel pot beetles on the leaf. Trouble is now, we've got the old leaf beetle problem. But it appears that at the moment we're still too early. I'm going to have another wander up and see, just keep checking the grass. It's a process that worked for many years. It just used to do one sort of sweep and walk up and down here. It would probably be three or four sweeps each visit. Let's hope I may be successful on this next one. But if not, there's always another day.